uh, my name is Hank Preston. I'm a principal engineer and net DevOps guy inside of Cisco DevNet. Um, I've been with Cisco for about, what is it, eight, nine years now, and been in doing networking for even longer than that. Um, traditionally, kind of the, the typical network engineer, I went through the certification path all the way up to CCIE. I've got a CCIE and route switch. And then several years ago, kind of started to bridge this gap into programmability. And today, I kind of talk a ton about network automation and programmability um, with, uh, and kind of how that fits in and, and help different organizations and engineers make their own transition into network automation and programmability. Okay. Yeah, the, the Python thing nowadays is a very important thing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and I saw one of your uh, posts, which is uh, is the 16.x should we have the Python already built in into the router or the switch? Yep. So, so Python is is a as an infrastructure automation language is kind of um, is definitely winning the game now, and I, I'm not I haven't seen anything that's gonna that seems like it's gonna take over. And so the, the general advice I have for network engineers is that as you get into automation and programmability, um, learning a bit of Python and kind of having becoming skilled and comfortable building scripts, um, looking at other people's scripts, mm -hmm. using it for, for a variety of tasks is a key one to go through. And along with, with Python becoming so important in the networking space, um, several years ago we started to see Python mm -hmm. interpreters um, and a Python interpreter is just the, the program that knows how to run a Python script. Um, and so we've started to see Python interpreters show up on different network platforms. Mm -hmm. um, the Nexus, Nexus operating system, so the, the OS that sits on kind of Nexus 3000 and 5000 and 7000 yep. and 9000, um, was the first operating system to get Python interpreters built in. And it, it's been there for several years now. And then back in, I, mean, I don't remember exactly which version of iOS XC, but it was 16-something. It's been out for, for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. We started to have the ability um, to run Python scripts directly on iOS devices as well, or iOS XE devices. And so these will be your, your Catalyst 3850s and 3650s, as well as obviously the, the newer Cat 9K platforms, um, ISR 4K routers, the CSR 1000V, which is the um, the virtual version of iOS XE. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the ASR 1000 platforms, the the ASR the um, and then the new ISR. I think they're the 1100 platforms. And so, kind of, it, it's it's anything that's running that iOS XE base should have the feature set so that you can actually write Python scripts and then run them directly on box. Is kind of what the how we phrase that. Sure. Yeah, that, uh, pretty much we agree on the same path that usual in my, I write articles in Arabic, you know, even in, in Baghdad to, in, on Facebook to people, you know, work in, in Middle East, you know, Dubai is a huge market, we have Egypt, another good market, and also Iraq is like, you know, improving in, into technology in Cisco and some other mix of other vendors. I said, yeah. uh, now if you started, you see your CCNA, you learn Python, you learn like Ansible or Chef, and then uh, you need to learn a little bit Linux. So you be just like a car has fully four tires PCI. That that that, that you do know what I say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, people having CCIE, I said, yeah, I mean, CCI is a, is a big uh, certificate. It's just still like kind of nowadays kind of prestige, but it's still you know CCI is the CCIE. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy exam. It's not an easy knowledge, and also you need to learn to learn your your programming language like Python. Exactly. You know, like uh, Java. I said no. Python is already because it's, it's written, and you know Ansible is already written by Python. Mm -hmm. is that right. It is, yeah. So Ansible has become very popular kind of in the network automation space. Um, it's a very easy to get started with network configuration management tool, um, mm -hmm. and its open source base makes it kind of really consumable and, and um, something that lots of, lots of folks in this area like. And as you mentioned, it's, it's written in Python. Mm -hmm. The general user, particularly when you're first getting started with Ansible, is you don't need to know Python to use it because what you work in are, are what's called the... Um, the Ansible domain specific language or DSL. And it's really just mm -hmm. a series of YAML files that define what, what tasks you want to run. 
and then in the YAML files, and, and typically those will be called playbooks, right? They're going to reference back to the different Ansible modules where the, the actual Python code is written. However, over time, almost everybody I talk to eventually gets to the point where the stuff that Ansible has like built in may not meet your needs explicitly. Mm -hmm. And so customizing or extending or even just fixing bugs in, in the open source Ansible code, um, having some Python skill there makes it much, much easier to get in because now you'll understand um, the actual module code itself. You can write your own. Um, and so once again, Python is really kind of, again, that language for infrastructure automation, whether you're talking network or compute or storage or security, kind of Python's everywhere, but, but very much so for the network guys.